I know. Do you see that? That is the head shake that transcends language barriers. All right. I don't need to speak Japanese to know exactly what's going on in dude's head. Gardevoir EX absolutely dominated the Champions League in Niigata, Japan. In our upcoming format, which is going to feature cards from Paldea Evolve, this is going to be our North American International Championship format, the biggest Western tournament of the year will feature the same pool of cards or similar pool of cards than what we're seeing from this Champions League in Japan. And this 2,700 player tournament came down to two Gardevoir EX decks in the finals. So a huge showing for Gardevoir EX, even though it didn't crack the top eight at the Portland Regional Championships. This deck gets even stronger with new cards from Paldea Evolved, and I'm stoked to show it off in today's video. We're gonna watch through the top four and finals of the Champions League in Niigata, and then at the end of the video, we'll break down the winner's list and talk about all of the new options for Gardevoir EX with the upcoming set Paldea Evolved. Let's get into it. Here we go, top four of the Champions League in Niigata, Japan. We have got Arceus Giratina V-Star versus Gardevoir. Both of these players competing for a shot at the finals of this nearly 3,000 player tournament. And Gardevoir will be playing first and opens double battle VIP pass. Absolutely insane. Double battle VIP pass. I mean, when Guard of War goes first and opens double battle VIP pass, it's lights out. That's just that's just what it is. You get all your Pokemon set up. Turn one, turn two. I mean, that's one of Guard of War's biggest weaknesses is if you don't get your Pokemon out quick, then it can be difficult to dig to the bottom of your deck by turn three and that's really what Gardevoir is setting out to do you want to be at the bottom of your deck on turn three turn one you want to get all the Ralts out into play I know do you see that these do you see that that is the head shake that transcends language barriers all right that head shake right there I don't need to speak Japanese to know exactly what's going on in dude's head. <laughs> Let's watch that back. Yeah, bro. Right there on the left. Look at it. Dang, bro. <laughs> they, they always have it. <laughs> Dang, bro. Man. Man, bro. Going first with the double battle VIP pass. Brother, you didn't even have to use the Mew. Ugh. It hurts. But we'll retreat into Mew anyway. Use its ability. Grab a third battle. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> the head shake again. It's so over. It's my over. <laughs> oh, sheesh. And roar of the sword. We'll accelerate a psychic energy from the deck to the Zashi and turn one going first. Uh, that is such a brutal, intimidating start to be facing against when you're playing an Arceus deck. I mean, when you're playing any deck, literally any deck in the format, you hate to see this. They've got the Capturing Aroma. That's a really interesting card to have included in an Arceus deck. 
looks like this Arceus deck features Giratina V-Star and Flying Pikachu. Now, obviously, the, the primary strategy of these Arceus decks against Gardevoir decks is going to be to use Judge and then uh, Path to the Peak. That's really what they're going to be looking for. With Judge and Path to the Peak, you want to turn off your opponent's Gardevoir's ability and just try to slow them down as much as possible. Take big knockouts with Giratina V-Star. We do see they've got the Cleansing Gloves in their deck, which allows their Giratina V-Star to reach that 310 hit point threshold to take knockouts on Gardevoir. And it's going to be a turn one Trinity Charge. I didn't see a supporter card in this player's hand, so that's really tough because they're going to want one to really get moving as soon as possible because this Gardevoir deck is absolutely kicking. I mean, right now, it's possible that the Gardevoir deck gets a turn two knockout with a start like this. I mean, they've got Mew in the active. They could reach for Rare Candy Gardevoir. They've got a and V on the bench with an energy on it. Uh, psychic Energy getting accelerated to the discard pile. Radiant Greninja in play. I mean, this is the dream from Gardevoir right here. It's exactly what you want. Concealed Cards to discard a Psychic and get two more cards in an already massive hand and level ball. We'll grab them a Curlia so that they can start to use refinement and dig even deeper into their deck. There we go. Refinement discarding boss. They won't really need that because they're just going to be knocking out whatever's in the active spots. The Gardevoir deck really only needs to go 2-4-6, right? Just take just take two knockouts as quickly as possible or take three knockouts as quickly as possible. There's always going to be a two-prize Pokemon in the active spot or a three-prize Pokemon in the active spot. Um, so the boss's orders is kind of low on the uh, importance factor here. We've got Mew, and I think they're looking for a rare candy. They ditched the Curlia, and they find the rare candy. Look at that, Look at that bro. <laughs> Look at the expression. Oh, my gosh. You see the – this is exactly what it feels like to play against Gardevoir too, bro. This is exactly what it feels like. When they're popping off like this, like, oh, my God, please help me, dude. Yes. This dude on the right just ref discarded a Curlia off of Refinement with no other Curlia in hand saying, I'm going to find that rare candy. <laughs> On oh, God, I'm about to find that rare candy. <laughs> Watch this again. Here we go. Boom. The cut. Refinement. Discard. The Curlia says, I don't need it. And then we got it, dude. Right here. Rare candy. Off the rip. Boom. And then the expression on the left. When he sees the rare candy. Brother. <laughs> The triple battle VIP pass into the turn to Rare Candy Gardevoir EX Double Curlia. Yeah, just absolutely nutters, right? I mean, it's uh, this is turn two going first, right? Turn two going first, absolutely. 
insane. And we're just going to swing with Gardevoir EX since this player on the right knows that there's no way that this Arceus player can reach for a knockout on Gardevoir EX, which still has 250 hit points. Player on the left finds a nest ball, but I don't think that that is going to be enough to save them as I am fairly certain that they do not have a supporter card in their hand or an Arceus V-Star. So this is just... Uh, you know, this is just kind of clinging on to whatever they can. They've got... Okay, I'm wrong. They've got Arceus. So Starbirth will get them whatever they want. I didn't see the Starbirth. There we go. Arceus V-Star will grab whatever two cards they want. And it looks like they've got Sharon's Care that they are eyeing up. So they can pick up this damaged Arceus. And then trying to decide what the next route is. It's tough. I don't even... You definitely want to judge path. So Sharon's care doesn't feel great, but picking up the damaged Arceus is also good. But with no cards in hand, I mean, this is definitely a crucial decision to make. It is going to be Sharon's care. And then here comes Arceus doing 230 damage. Not quite enough to knock out the Guard of War. And then with just a couple cards left in hand, they will swing with Trinity Nova. 230 damage, putting the Guard of War up to 290 damage on it. And it'll accelerate three energy to the Giratina V on the bench. And the player on the left kind of taking stock of what they have in their deck, saying, all right, is there any way I can turn this around? Obviously, Judge and Path are going to be like, that's what you need, right? Need to be able to disrupt. Need to be able to turn that ability off. Uh, that's the only hope here. The player on the right has got two refinements available to them. And Radiant Greninja. Worker. Coming down now means that the worker won't be available to discard or, yeah, to discard a stadium in the immediate future unless they play Pal Pad to shuffle it back in. I do really like worker's inclusion in these Gardevoir decks. Obviously, a draw card that doubles as a stadium removal is fantastic. Very useful card. Helps the Gardevoir deck accomplish the goal of being able to get to the bottom of the deck as quickly as possible. A couple of refinements and there appears to be seven energy accounted for in play right now, at least one in the hand and a reversal energy, but player on the right is not losing. So the reversal energy not counting as anything quite yet. Ultra Ball. Maybe go find a Shining Arcana Gardevoir, and that's what we got. So with Shining Arcana, can draw two more cards. We'll see if they're able to reach for knockouts on the Arceus. Shining Arcana gets two. I've got seven energy in total, so seven energy is 270 damage with Zashi and V. They need an eighth. And they actually have one energy locked onto Gardevoir, so they can't uh, quite get there without another energy even. So they're treating to Mew. And 
and attach a psychic energy. It might be a, yeah, just going to be a turn where they actually retreat the Gardevoir and decide to just accelerate energy with Roar of the Sword instead to get more energy online deciding that it's going to be a losing battle swinging with guard of war or not swinging for a knockout so they're just going to try and sack the mew and this is exactly what the arceus player on the left needs in order to stay in the game looks like the other grab off of the starbirth was a research so here we go seven new cards And they are able to find a Giratina V-Star Judge for the following turn. And an Arceus. And a Path. So really, this is a very good draw from the Arceus player. Because they've got everything they need for next turn. And they were able to dodge the knockout uh, this, this past turn, which is very big for them. With the V-Guard energy on the benched Arceus, it will be a little bit more difficult for Zashi and V to take a knockout on it. Then, of course, we got a pass. And the reason we got a pass is because the player on the left doesn't want to take the lead because of reversal energy, right? So they obviously want to judge path first before they open up the play for a big reversal energy play. So that's pretty interesting. We'll see how the player on the right responds to it. They're playing a game of chicken right now. Right? Feels like back in the day when you were trying to play around twins and stuff. Right? It's, it's like that, which is interesting. You even get some of these kinds of plays in Gym Leader Challenge when you're trying to play around counter energy. Right. So that's pretty cool. Now the player on the right has got their energy divided into multiple places. I mean, they've got an energy on Gardevoir EX. They've got an energy on Shining Arcana Gardevoir and two on Zashian. In order to take a knockout, they have to have eight on Zashian V or eight on Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Uh, they aren't hitting this knockout without that. And with their energy in multiple places, I think the player on the left knows that. The only way that they're really hitting that knockout is with a reversal energy. So playing around the reversal energy, very good, obviously. Refinement for two. We got a Shining Arcana probably as well for two. And things are getting really interesting. Those are the final six cards of this player's deck. So they can grab one item card and put the remaining five cards back. They're going to retreat into Zashian. And is this eight? Is this the eight that we need? Must be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure enough, that is eight. And the Gardevoir player will take the first knock out of the game with Zashi and V, reaching for all of the energy that they needed to take that knockout. So here comes Arceus with the V guard. And let's see what they've got. With only. Oh, boss's orders will bring up Curlia. And at this point, oh, okay. And it's a pass. So, Curlia's got a retreat cost of two, right? And at this point, you pretty much know that the player's only got five cards left in their deck. I mean, they just literally mysterious tailed into the bottom six cards of their deck. So they're saying, all right, between Greninja and this Curlia and the fact that you've got 10 energy in play, right? Um, I could possibly win this game just by decking you out. So 
you know, when your opponent starts triple battle VIP pass, turn two guard of war EX, like this might be your best route. And well, let's see how, see how it pans out for him. The player on the right has basically got their entire deck in their hands. They can use refinement. They literally do have their entire deck in their hands. They can use refinement and they can draw two cards and they can use Shining Arcana and they can draw two cards. So there, Collapse Stadium. So it's a cool play, but Collapse Stadium can just discard two energy and then you're you're out of it, right? You get those two energy to the discard pile. Not just two. I mean, they discarded the Zashian. So that's eight energy back in the discard pile, which means that now this player can accelerate those energy wherever they want. So that is a, a total bailout, totally fine. And now the Arceus player like didn't take a knockout last turn. So they're going to go even further behind in prizes if the Gardevoir player is able to respond this turn. They can retreat into Gardevoir. And they have seven energy on the active, which is as many as they can place. Eighth from hand. And since this Gardevoir is not a Pokemon V, it'll go straight through that V-Guard energy and take two more prizes. So... There we go. Arceus player left with just a lone Tina. And nothing else. Bidoof can safely make its way onto the bench as it only gives up one prize. So that's fine. But not going to lie, this board seems pretty gnarly to deal with. With Super Rod available. could be very easy for the Gardevoir player to recover the Zashian that they need to just win the game. And that's all they need at this point is just a Zashian. And that's it. Because once the Gardevoir player sees 10 energy, it's over. They can one hit anything. All they need is to find Zashian. But, of course, we've got Iono Path. So, there is that. However... Gardevoir player does have a very small deck and Curlia still available to them. So we'll see what they're able to find off of this Iono to two. A Giratina player does have an escape rope and a flying Pikachu. Flying Pikachu V has free retreat, so if they wanted to rope, they could. And pivot with the Pikachu. Looks like they're going to Ultra Ball it away. And off of the Ultra Ball, they'll grab Squovit. Okay. That is Squovit, right? Pretty sure. I'm not super familiar with the art rare, but I think it's Squovit. Thank you, JB Gamble, for that sub in the 47 months. There we go. Lost Impact. You really hate to lost impact for one prize. <laughs> That's not it's not what you want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> Mew from celebrations going into the active again. All this player on the right needs is a Zashian V and it's lights out. They're checking their resources. Cards that they've used in their discard pile. And there's the rod. And they're going to shuffle back in. I think a Ralts, a Curlia, and Zashi and V. Literally. Well, I guess they need a path. They need a path counter too. So they don't just need Zashi and V. They need to counter the path. That is true. I'm going to find rare candy off of the Mysterious Tail. Thank you, Bonnet's Baguettes, for the sub in the two months.
And then refinement for two. Uh, I've got the scramble energy, which doesn't do anything. They've got the stadium counter, but they just need... They need the Zashian in hand. They don't have it right now. So it's close. It's close. The Guardi player has one more turn because this turn, the... Uh, the thing is, though, they've got rope, but you can't boss an Iono in the same turn. So that's kind of the issue. Is they need to do both. If they boss, they're leaving them with the four-card hand. And you really don't want to do that because they need a two-card combo to win. They need... They need the Zashian and they need the Counter Stadium. So you really want to Iono if you can. But then you have to like put pressure on your opponent's board and not just knock out the Mew. So you kind of also have to Gust, right? So let's see, they play. Capturing Aroma. Industrious Incisors for five. And they do find some boss. They don't find an Arceus V Star. They've got a judge. So they could boss and power edge. They could take out the Curlia, which is like the draw power, right? Yeah. I almost feel like... I almost feel like the Curlia... Like, I get it. <sighs> I get why you go Gardevoir here, but like the Curlia is going to allow them to see two more cards. So, and you've got boss boss in your hand. So, I think that it's correct to go. That's what I'm saying. It's Curlia for sure, right? Yeah. It, it's Curlia here. Nah, it's, it's Curlia, dude. They didn't have it in their hand. Well, because here's the deal. It's 100% Curlia because they didn't have it in their hand or else they would have played it. They didn't have a supporter in their hand or else they would have played that, right? So you know they don't have the... They don't have... Ah, I think. I think it's the Curlia, dude. I think it's the Curlia, 100%. You have to limit their draw. You absolutely have to. I'm just saying, I haven't pre-watched, and if the Curlio wins them this game, I don't want to hear it. They've got boss. They've got Iono. Iono not actually drawing them any cards right here. Ah, uh, they get Ultra Ball, so they have it. All they need to do, Ultra Ball, Counter Stadium. Bada boom, bada bing. And that's it. GG's. Iono definitely made this car made this game more interesting. It seemed like a total blowout. And the game did actually become pretty close, but the thing is is that I mean the opponent on the, the player on the left still had three prizes left to take.
Very well played. I mean, with Curlia and Mew, you just have so much dig, even out of Iono. Uh, the, the refinement, Shining Arcana, you've got a lot of options to continue digging, even after getting your hand disrupted. Uh, the player on the left played very well. Both players played very well. It's definitely a fun game to watch. But the triple battle VIP pass opening... I mean, going first, that's tough. It's really tough to overcome. We got the finals coming up. Guardy Mirror, baby. Well, let's do it. This is the finals of the 2,700 player Champions League tournament in Niigata, Japan. Player on the right has got turn one battle VIP pass with Mew in the active, and they're going to search out Ralts and going straight for that. Cresselia. Yo, what's up, Cash? What's up, Pokemon Promos? Congrats on your win, Cash. Welcome back, Pokemon Promos. Thank you for being here. Uh, you know it's bad when your opponent... <laughs> Bro... You ever just have an opening hand like that? You're like, yeah, I'll battle VIP pass. And then we go, Brr! that's it. Who needs another one? There's the rest of my fellas right there. But you've unlocked my trap card. Turn one Zinnia's resolve, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the turn one full bench into the turn one zinnia's resolve that's crazy okay for six got him huge thanks to pumpkin amy for the raid of 83 welcome everybody from the pumpkin pit Thank you for being here. We're watching the finals of the uh, Champions League from this past weekend. We got a Guardy Mirror in, on our hands, so it's pretty exciting. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Welcome to the channel. The player on the left will get a v battle VIP pass of their own. And both players seem to be eyeing up Cresselia. <laughs> and they've got a fog crystal. For another Ralts. And another fall crystal. Okay. Free yet another Ralts. That seems to be the end of their turn one searching. Well, probably not, as they will definitely roar of the sword. Got Ultra Ball. And a psychic energy. Yeah, psychic energy to the active. And Roar of the Sword. We got Sasagawa on the right and Yamaguchi on the left. Thank you, Pokemon Promos. Thank you. And then Sasagawa has got those level balls in hand, ready to go. First Curlia coming down. 
and a refinement discarding. Oh no, and just an Iono. To see six more cards, Iono seems like the supporter of choice in these Gardevoir decks. Obviously very strong, conserving resources, and allowing you to dig six cards early in the game. Still very strong. Got concealed cards, refinement. Looking for another Curlia going for Mysterious Tail, and there's the Ultra Ball. Discarding a Battle VIP Pass and a Psychic Energy. We've got the Rare Candy Guard of War EX. This is the turn two. Okay. Turn two, Rare Candy Guardy. And... We're going in. Because you can snipe Ralts, right? So you got that 60 hit point Ralts. You messed up, dude. You messed up with that 60 hit point Ralts over there. <laughs> he could do 80 though, so it doesn't matter. It's true. But he's not doing 80. He's doing 60. So it does matter. Saving that energy for later. Well, let's go. And that's why you go early Cresselia. That's why both players wanted it, right? Players got... Zashi and fully loaded and Gust to bring up a Curlia on the bench. I like that. Targeting down Curlia and Storm Slash for the knockout. Both players have five prizes. And it's crazy. They're playing so fast like it's a single game finals, dog. <laughs> single game finals. This thing's going to be over in 15 minutes. So sick. Super Rod. Now outfitted with the up to text. So they don't have to shuffle those psychic energy back into the deck. Like you used to have to back in the day. Concealed cards. And Iono again. Setting both players to five cards. And kind of interesting. Yamaguchi now without a Curlia, but they are able to rip an Ultra Ball off of the Mysterious Tail. And here's Ultra Ball going for Curlia. Yep. And two more Psychic Energy into the discard pile. Refinement to discard Manaphy. And here we go. Cresselia coming back up. And I think that they're going to target down another Ralts. And you can see how important this Cresselia is in the Gardevoir mirror match. Both players understanding that taking out the opponent's support system is one of the most important things you can do, I don't know, and knock out the Ralts. Concealed cards, got rare candy, and Ultra Ball. So, I mean, they can rare candy into a Gardevoir, And they're going to knock out this Cresselia this turn. Obviously, they would like to draw more cards with uh, with Curlia, but it's tough. I mean, every Ralts you put out, it's like those things are getting picked off. I mean, obviously, the Cresselia is going down now, so maybe they won't be able to recover it and use it again. I mean, at a certain point, Cresselia kind of gets powered out, but obviously, in the early turns, it is very strong. You know, they don't need Gardevoir EX online yet because Zashian already has three energy on it.
And actually, it's just going to be another boss's orders. Okay. So both players trying to target down each other's supports. And both players at two prizes taken. Without Curlia, this deck is not drawing a lot of cards. So, you know, both players being keenly aware of that, Rod is going to shuffle another Curlia line back into the deck. And then I think they do have a research in their hand, so they could just let it rip. And that's what they're going to do. Obviously, when you can't use refinements, research still a very good card. And it's nice to see that these Gardevoir decks are still running research because research, I mean, there's just nothing like it. Discard your hand, draw seven. Gotta have it. Mysterious Tail. And there's a Fog Crystal. Fog Crystal for a Psychic Energy. Concealed Cards for two more. Pal Pad off of that. Both Ralts coming down. And Psychic Embrace. We're going back at it again. With Cresselia saying, you will knock out my Cresselia. <laughs> you will do it. And 80 damage taking out Curlia. Palpat will shuffle two supporters back into the deck. And this Zashian is still chilling here. I got to say, Yamaguchi feels incredibly favored at this point. Not having a Zashian V on the board, uh, which is an easy two-prize liability. And just being up a prize, up a turn. Got Rod shuffling in the Ralts and the Curly. It just feels like the player on the left is doing things that it just feels like they're one step behind the whole game. With the player on the right being able to be the first one to aggress, the first one to take a point in knockouts. You know, and their board is showing that. Especially when both players are so easily able to get a, a full board on turn one. You know, going first just obviously superior if you're able to do that with the Gardevoir deck. So you're going to Ultra Ball. And Zashi, and I mean, still just able to take knockouts, but eventually that Zashin is going to get absolutely thrashed, probably by a Shining Arcana Gardevoir, and this hand is looking pitiful right now. We can see the wheels are really falling off this Gardevoir deck on the left, with all of the support gone. And Collapse Stadium will force a discard of Mew. Now the question is, will Yamaguchi be able to respond with a big Shining Arcana knockout on Zashian? Let's see. Uh, they've got the hand advantage by far. Refinement to draw two. And, you know, debating evolving into a second Curlia, maybe trying to weigh if they have a shot to find Rare Candy Gardevoir first. Going to go for the concealed cards and see. 
And I'm imagining, yes, it's going to be a Curlia angle. So they evolve into Curlia. No Rare Candy Dreams this turn. And will Boss's Orders targeting down the only Curlia? I mean, at this point, it's insanity. Player on the left has had their bench targeted every single turn. From turn two onward, it has just been a full-on assault on the bench. With Cresselia plays, Boss's Orders plays, just chasing down those Ralts, chasing down those Curlia. And player on the left's got nothing. And you can see this game is really accelerating now. There's the Shining Arcana Guard of War. And that's it. GG's Yamaguchi taking the win with Guard of War EX. GG's, GG's. Very fast-paced finals with lots of bench sniping, lots of bench targeting. That was uh, an explosive finals for sure. I mean, we saw in top four and in the finals, uh, Yamaguchi was able to just shoo, start with a full bench and really just get everything set up on turn two, turn three. I mean, and when Guard of War can do that, it is a nearly unstoppable force. I mean, it is just such a powerhouse of a deck. So GG's to all players. Congratulations again to Yamaguchi on the Champions League victory in Niigata. Here we have Yoshiyuki Yamaguchi's winning deck from the 2,700 player Champions League event in Niigata, Japan. And taking a look at this list, it's really not that different from Gardevoir EX decks that we're used to seeing right now. It's got all the same major players, Zashi and V, Cresselia, Shining Arcana, Gardevoir, Gardevoir EX, and most notably, there is no Drifloon shenanigans going on here. We're seeing these straightforward, consistent beat stick decks outperforming the Drifloon Champions Festival Charm of Courage decks. Now, if you're unfamiliar, there is a new tool card coming out in our upcoming set, Paldea Evolved Charm of Courage, which increases the hit point total of the basic Pokemon it's attached to by 50. This card was gaining a lot of hype in combination with Drifloon and its Balloon Blast attack, which does 30 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if you load up 10 damage counters on Drifloon with Gardevoir EX's Psychic Embrace, you can do 300 damage. And then if you pair this with Champions Festival, a World Championship exclusive card that you can only get by attending the World Championships, then you can heal your Drifloon and max out at some 320 damage enough to KO Gardevoir EX. This version of the deck was gaining a lot of hype heading into the Champions League and didn't perform. Both of the Gardevoir EX decks in the finals played a more straightforward attacking option featuring Zashi and V, Cresselia and Gardevoir. And in the finals, we saw just how important that Cresselia is and how important it is to target down your opponent's Ralts and Curlia as fast as possible. I think playing a Gardevoir EX deck that features Cresselia and the ability to reuse that Cresselia early on is really going to set you at an advantage above other Gardevoir EX players. I also really like the inclusion of four Iono in this deck. I mean, Iono is obviously a powerhouse supporter coming out in our upcoming set. It's a hand disruptor. It's a great draw card. It is going to be a format 
defining supporter for formats to come. So four copies of Iono, definitely fantastic to see in this deck. And then of course the one copy of Reversal Energy can allow you to make explosive plays when playing from behind is a great way to add damage onto the Shining Arcana Gardevoir Typically, you can only accelerate six energy to Shining Arcana Gardevoir in a single turn, meaning that you may be locked at doing 270 damage after an attachment from your hand. But with the Reversal Energy, you can easily boost up over 300 damage with Brainwave even when you're behind. So I really like the inclusion of the Reversal Energy, the four copies of Iono. It really is a consistent list, and that's exactly what we saw with Yoshiyuki performing in the top four and finals matches. So major congratulations to Yoshiyuki Yamaguchi, who was able to win the Champions League in Niigata, Japan. Do you think that Gardevoir EX is the new deck to beat in our upcoming Paldea Evolved set? Do you think that Gardevoir EX has actually fallen off at all, not performing at the Portland Regional Championships? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching the video. Y'all take it easy and have a good one. See ya.